Welcome back to this presentation on financial modeling using Kaluta projection methodology. Last time we ended up establishing free cash flows for our business, for our projected business. Now we proceed to do business valuation by using our unlevered free cash flow. So we start with typing here unlevered free cash flow, double tap to unlevered free cash flow, which is the, I just put equal sign here and pick it above here, and then tap to fill this to the rest of projection period to capture it. Then let me put year indication here, year, year zero, so it is zero, here is year one, put one, year two, put two, year three, put three. And then uh, let us now establish the discounting factor. We have our unlevered free cash flow, which is free cash flow available for distribution to equity and debt holders after meeting all business cash flow for business obligation that is operating cash flow requirements and capital expenditure okay to maintain the uh, the assets of the business what is left is the free cash flow available for distribution to uh, providers of funds that is unlevered free cash flow and because we are using unlevered free cash flow we now use a cost of capital that incorporate both providers of funds, uh, equity and debt holders, okay? So that is the cost of funds we have to establish. Why do we use a discounting factor as a cost of capital, okay? So the first thing is business get funding for capital and debt to run their businesses. The providers of those funding need to be compensated for the risk of uh, giving you money to run your business to make profit. So they need compensation. They need to, uh, to be paid required rate of return. The rate they think it is fit for them to be compensated to give you their money to operate your business. Now this, this is the price now of the, the loan or the capital you are getting to run your business, okay? The required rate of return. This is actually the minimum rate of return that the provider of funds needs, the provider of funds needs to compensate for best alternative investment he could have uh, if he would have invested that money elsewhere, okay? So the best alternative is called an opportunity cost. So it's an opportunity cost for the provider of funds, okay? And that's why we use it as a discount factor because we need to discount our future cash flows with this factor to see if the present value of discounted future cash flow, the, the present value is positive enough to enable the business to, I mean, to, to enable to pay the providers of funds as well as uh, remaining with adequate return for uh, the owner of the business, okay? So, how do we establish that 
cost of capital because we are dealing with uh, both debt and equity holders we need to uh, develop an average cost of capital for both of them which is known as weighted average cost of capital now let me create a sheet here and call it so I create a sheet and rename it as cost of funds cost of funds so here I put equity and we have debt component and below we will have total so let's start with data for amount for equity we start with equal sign here go to our cash flow annual cash flow statement your cash flow statement yeah equity is available at cash flow from financing activities here we have capital figure this one press enter debt we can just tap to fill this because debt is adjacent to to equity in the cash flow statement and then we just use a sum formula to sum the two to get the total injection in the business okay so that is far, as far as amount is concerned and let us now establish the proportion of total capital here which are called weights of total funds within this business for capital for equity we start with equal sign click on equity figure divide by total capital the same for debt start with equal sign click on debt divide by total capital so those are the weights the proportion of total investment uh, uh, in terms of amount and then here we are establishing the required rate of return R -R -R -R, required rate of return for required rate of return for equity we will need some explanation there for debt because it is given so we are going to pick it from our loan sheet so i start with equal sign here and then go to loan sheet here and then pick the annual interest rate which is 20 percent for this loan we have taken for this business so 20 percent but because uh, interest payments are tax deductible and hence provide tax saving for the business or tax shield we need to apply the after tax cost of debt so we ha we have to adjust this interest uh, uh, figure absolute interest figure to come up with effective interest rate so we take the absolute interest given multiply by open the bracket one minus tax rate which is 30 percent in our case close the bracket press enter so the effective tax rate is not 20 percent is not 20 percent as we saw in the loan but it is 14 percent uh, after uh, incorporating the the tax saving as we have just explained now let us come for the required rate of return for equity and normally 
there are two uh, basic methods that are used to establish expected required rate of equity. Uh, the first one is dividend capitalization model, and uh, there's another one is capital asset pricing model. Okay, so uh, first, both of these models you need in order to use them, you need to have uh, efficient data available uh, in your country or in the place where the business is. Eh? is operated uh, for the purpose of getting the inputs needed to be um, uh, filled in the models to, to, to get the expected uh, return, okay? So let me uh, give some demonstration here. Let me go to my, my web sheet where I have uh, I have put this for explanation to you. So for the divid dividend capitalization model, the formula to establish required uh, equity rate of return for equity is you take current uh, dividend that is the next uh, dividend to be paid in next year of a stock divide by the price of the stock and then you add the dividend growth rate for the stock okay so these figures are available for companies that are listed in efficient uh, markets okay efficient markets for for this i mean in well organized markets like uh, standard and poor's okay uh, Bloomberg and other uh, high-profile market uh, stock exchange within the world, uh, Dow Jones and etc. So there is where you get the data for for these variables. Mm -hmm. For example, the dividend next year dividend. Uh, so long as a company is public listed that information will be available publicly through the presentation or the submission to the stock exchange on a quarterly basis about the performance of the business so you get the information there uh, current share price you also get for example there are websites like yahoo finance uh, bloomberg uh, Google Finance and many others where uh, you can get the information about the current price which is the real price running and uh, dividend growth rate of course you'll get this information about dividend growth rate by for example in Yahoo Finance you can simply go to the historical data area of, uh, of a stock and then you will choose dividend option you will choose number of years to uh, to download the data then you'll get those data and those data you will have now to compute the the returns and the returns you just take the current return divide by the previous return minus 1 to get the return for each uh, period and then the average return for them or the annualized compounded growth rate will give you the expected uh, dividend growth rate okay that is for dividend capitalization model and uh, for capital asset pricing model uh, to get the required rate of return you need to have risk-free rate this is the rate uh, for uh, government uh, treasure bills or bonds okay often it's called risk-free because it is uh, theoretical that the the government cannot default on paying so this is why it's called risk-free but definitely there is some amount of risk on any uh, government uh, debt and the risk becomes higher uh, depending on the rating of the company okay? i mean rating of the country okay 
So still there is some element of risk there, but it is called risk, theoretical risk-free, okay? And uh, the beta, uh, this is the volatility of the stock in relation to volatility of the market, okay? So, for example, you are analyzing Apple, okay? So you will have to establish the volatility of the Apple in relation to the volatility of the market. Let's say the market here is Standard & Poor's, okay? You are taking the market, uh, the, uh, the, the, the index in which the stock you are evaluating is uh, incorporated there, okay? So, uh, Apple, of course, is in Standard & Poor's, so you can take the market, you, you can take, you take the, the, the prices for the Apple, say historically weekly basis for 10 years, you download them, you can use Yahoo Finance, okay? You download them, and then you take uh, the market, uh, the, the, the prices for, for the market, that is for standard and poor uh, index rate, for the same period of, say, weekly on 10 years. And then after downloading this, you establish the returns for each, for stock, that is for Apple, you take the current price of the Apple, divide by the, the previous price, minus one, so you get the return for Apple, you do the same for market, and then after getting these returns, then you simply do some uh, computation, for example, you can use a, a slope function in Excel to establish the 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 beta or you can use uh, uh, covariance of the the apple divided by the variance of the market to establish the beta uh, or you can use regression analysis to mm. to get a trend line from the populated dots and then that trend line will be will have uh, a beta coefficient therein, okay? So this is how you are going to establish the beta. For market, I said, for example, in this case, it's standard and poor, so you will have the, 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 the volatility of the market. Volatility of the market is taken to be one. So beta uh, can be either equal to the market, that means the beta can be one, or it can be less than the market, which means uh, the stock is less riskier compared to the market, or it can be greater than the market, than greater than one. In this case, the stock is more riskier compared to the market, okay? So that is how you establish uh, the variables, and you feed the variables into the model to compute for uh, expected uh, required rates of equity. But as I said, to use these models, uh, you need, the business needs to be listed, or if it is not listed, then at least you can get industry, uh, industry uh, figures for the public listed companies uh, that can be used as proxy for your private company. And these data, of course, you'll get from countries with efficient market system, uh, not in a case like mine here in Tanzania, where we are an emerging country, so uh, the data we are having about our uh, business performance on our Daslam stock exchange is not adequate, it's not efficient enough to give you uh, the, the variables, uh, data for the variables needed. So let's go back to our our uh, exercise here. Now, with that information on hand, how do you establish the required rate of return for equity? The starting point in this case will be we know the required rate for debt. That is 20%, as we have seen. The bank needs 20% annual rate of return 
to inject the money into this business. So at least we know, and we know that debts are cheaper than equity for a number of reasons. One, because debt holders need collateral before they issue loan so that the, the collateral insulates uh, them from uh, risk of exposure to losing their funds. And another thing is when the company is liquidated, debt holders' uh, claims are paid before uh, stockholders' claim. So that is another uh, point of reference to look at. Okay, So because debt is cheaper than equity, then we should expect equity holder in these circumstances to require more return than 20% for the debt holders in this case, okay? And given my experience in Tanzania and the data you can try to get in the internet, of course, if you can pay, you still can get some information about um, these statistical data prepared, compiled by business experts. Okay, you still can get them, but still they will be dirty proxies uh, because of inefficient uh, information in in Tanzania and uh, in emerging countries. Okay, so so wh what what figure now am I going to use as required rate of return? So it should be above twenty, and in this case, I take it to be thirty-five according to uh, the experience. So I say 35% to be the rate of return that we are expecting, uh, that, that the equity holders expect to get uh, from injecting their capital in this business. Okay. Now, after having that, we now need to establish the weighted rate of returns. weighted returns which is simply start with equal sign take the weight of equity multiply by required rate for equity oh sorry let me repeat it so start by weight of equity multiply by rate for equity press enter and the same for for debt so I fill this down so those are expected required rate of return in this portfolio of total uh, total funds provided and weighted average cost of capital is simply summation of the two press enter so this is our let me put it in percentage, sorry, put it in percentage first. Let me go here on top and choose percent. So this is our weighted average cost of capital. Work, okay? So this is the cost of capital we are going to use uh, to evaluate our projected uh, future cash flows to discount them as a discounting factor to discount them to present values okay so let me go back to our yearly projected financial sheet projected cash flow and your cash flow here and proceed with our so I type here weighted average cost of capital I click here, start with equal sign, go to 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 sheet for our cost of funds here and pick this figure, press enter. So that is our weighted average cost of capital. Now we need to establish the discount factor.
for our future cash flows, okay? So starting from year one, we already have our, the, 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 the formula for, for, for establishing the factor, okay? For the, of discount, discounting is, you start this, let me start with equal sign. So you say one plus R, one plus R, and this one needs to maybe maybe let me start with the bracket. Start with bracket one plus R, and R in this case is the cost of capital discounting factor. And then one plus R, close the bracket, and this one is raised to power of the number of year, that is N. So this is the formula now, which we are going to put it for this counting factor. So let me put real, real numbers here instead of those formula. So I start with the bracket, then one plus our R here is our weighted average cost of capital. Now, because I will use this formula I'm preparing here to drag it to the rest of other, I need to lock the cell B14, B54, for which has this weighted average cost of capital figure. I need to lock it. So to lock it, I'll start with equal sign, then type B to lock the column B, then again equal sign, type 54 to lock row 54. 54. Okay. So 1 plus R, close the bracket, and then raise the 2, power of the year in this case here is here on top press enter okay so this is our discounting factor and we now can fill this tap to fill this throughout the projection period in this case three years as our discounting factors okay yeah, yeah. so now that we have our discounting factors we now need to create the present value of future cash flow. Now, let me type here present value, okay? Why we use the discount factor as weighted average cost of capital is because the providers of funds need to be compensated when they give you funds for share of profit because of the risk they are taking, okay? And in this case, the cost of capital is the required minimum rate of return for people who will provide funds into your business. It is called the minimum because it is an opportunity cost for the provider of funds. Opportunity cost in the sense that there is a best alternative for a provider of funds to use his funds to make money and he is foregoing that best alternative in order to invest to you. So for that matter, that's why uh, the, the cost of capital is called the opportunity cost. Now, because it is an opportunity cost, you know, to discount the future cash flow, we discount it because of the time value of money. The money you have now is more worth than the money in the future because the money you have now, you can invest it and create money, more money in future. And in this case, if you have money now, you will use your opportunity cost. That is the minimum cost of capital because you have best alternative. We will put it in best alternative and it will in you money. Okay, that's why we use the cost of capital to bring uh, the future cash flows in the present state so that we can compare that after our free cash flow have been discounted, 
by the expected return of the providers of funds is the money that we are getting, the, the present value of the discounted cash flow, is that enough to, to make this business plausible? Okay, so when the present values of future cash flow minus the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the present out outlay of cash is greater than one, that means is positive, then that positive figure means this business has intrinsic value which is positive and hence well w worth investing in it. Okay, that's why we are uh, creating the, uh, we are now computing the net present value of the business. So for present values, starting with year zero, year zero means now. So the cash flow you have, we have as a level free cash flow in year zero, this one, is already now so there is no need to discount them because it is already now okay so for that matter in fact I was, I was supposed to put discount factor here to be one okay for year zero is one now so I start with equal sign there click on unlevel free cash flow starting from year zero and then divide by discount factor here in this case, year zero is is one, because let me paint paint use the painter to paint the format here. Okay, then click the painter again to remove that. So the present uh, value for year zero is the same figure, and let me tap to fill this because it is true throughout. Sorry, fill this formula because it is true throughout our projected period. Okay, so these are our present values of the, the cash flow. Now net present value is simply the NPV is simply the sum of our uh, projected present value of uh, future cash flows and the current of course current cash outlay indicated in year zero so we just use the, the the sum let me use this sum here and I sum this PVs up to the end here press enter so I have my NPV figure here net present value so because, as I said, because the net present value is positive, that means this is, is worth business to take. Uh, when net present value uh, value the, the business metric or intrinsic value of the company in absolute figure, okay? In this case, in Tanzanian shillings. I'm modeling using Tanzanian shillings. So this is absolute value in Tanzanian shillings. And when NPV, as I said, is positive, then uh, the business is viable. Uh, the intrinsic value is worth investing in it, basing on the applied cost of capital. This, in this case, weighted average cost of capital. Now, another metric we normally used for valuation is internal rate of return. So let me type here I R R internal rate of return. Now this is a percentage return. It is a rate that equates the 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 cash flow cash outflows in in year zero with the cash inflow in in future years okay so when uh, this is the rate which if you will discount the future cash flows then they will be equal to 
the current outlay of money in year zero okay so this is what which is called internal rate of return so let's see here so i'm just using the excel sheet formula start with equal sign type irr irr let me pick it from here and then you just sum values here as you see values so the values here is starting from year zero unlevered free cash flow we take this unlevered free cash flow up to the end of our projected period so those are the value i press enter so i have our internal rate of return normally when the higher the internal rate of return the more profitable that business is and when internal rate of return is greater than the cost of capital then that business is also a plausible good one okay so we have those components another metric valuation metric used is profitability index okay this is simply taking the present value of future cash flows the sum of the present value of future cash flow divide by the 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 cash outlay in year zero okay so i start with equal sign and then use sum sum formula to sum present value of future pv from here up to up to end here okay because i'm using this android stuff let me do it part by part so let us start first of that plus part press enter now we have summed up for our future the present value of our future cash flow and then we now need to divide this one we divide it so we divide it by the initial outlay but because we want initial outlay to be positive figure in the formula so we start with negative number and then click on the initial outlay here and then press enter so that is our formula for profitability index in this case is 12 and normally when profitability index is greater than one uh, that, that means the business is viable okay and the last metric that is normally used is the payback period payback period now to do this i will need to do some calculations here by starting with the present value present value we have our present value i just pick them from here this is pv press enter and then tap this to fill throughout our projected horizon so we have our present value and then we have here figure for cumulative cumulative present value for the first in year zero is simply the same so we pick this figure for the next we start with equal sign click the previous figure plus the current figure press enter and that formula is true throughout so i feel this and for indication here we need to put year year metric which we have said we just equal to pick it here year metric we have it we just bring it here and tap this to fill now payback period is the period where 
the initial outlay is is absorbed by the free cash flow expected uh, free cash flow okay so in our case here the initial outlay in year zero of 17.7 million is fully covered in year one okay so the payback period in this case is less than a year okay is less than a year and uh, how we get that figure is by extrapolation uh, if i put with uh, start with equal sign then the f uh, how many years is we take this cumulative pv which is negative but i want it to be in the positive so i start with negative number i pick this figure and then i divide i divide by this pv in the in the next year where the the the, the pv is positive to get the estimated time period on which uh, this business will pay back and in this case is 0 0.25 over a year well okay and we know the year has 12 months so we can just we can just put a formula here below say this figure times 12 to put it in on monthly basis sorry i see let me use this formula this pad this figure times 12 months to so it's about three months they pay uh, they, this business pays back for about three months okay so i will i will pick i will pick payback period here to be this figure but we know it is if we convert it into month it is about three months now before i go on this projection shows that these valuation metrics shows that our projected numbers are not plausible okay why each metric here shows that the business is not realistic let's start with with net present value here figure out of the cash outlay of 17.7 million in the first year we end up with npv of more than 200 million just within three years and in fact just within one year we already have we already have 69 million npv out of cash outlay of 17 million for for in, injecting to this business for ex, for capital and operative expenditure during year zero so this is there is no such a profitable business in the world okay that is one metric the other metric is IRR of 511 percent this is huge mm -hmm. It's, it's, so it's not plausible too. Profitability index twelve times, covering your your projected uh, positive cash flow, covering your outlays twelve times. That's too huge, especially taking into consideration that we have projected only for three years. Okay. Payback period also only within three months is you are paying back what kind of business is that okay so uh, there is a problem in our our modeling of the value drivers of the business that is expected sales or expected cost of sales or other operating costs uh, we either have overvalued ourselves or underestimated our costs so that is the beauty of doing a business valuation because it gives a check and balance 
seeing the plausibility of your projected numbers. Now, that is where most of my clients used to see me as a wizard because I don't know their business, but after uh, providing, they have given me all the information about their business. We developed the business model for them. And at the end of the day, I said, my friend, go and try to look at this data, this data. Uh, there is something wrong there. Though I don't have information, but I think it's not right. And when he goes back and check, he realized that, oh, I overvalued, I overestimated here, or I underestimated something. So we rectify the thing. So this is the, the, the beauty of preparing a business valuation for, for, for the project, mm -hmm. computing these uh, uh, variable, okay? These uh, valuation metrics. So now, now that we have established that there is a problem, that is going to be the discussion in the next uh, presentation to to explain or to try to uh, uh, to adjust the variables and then look see if our projection are now plausible okay but before we conclude on this I want to give some emphasis on our year zero okay in this business modeling we have said that year zero is that period when the project or the business has not yet started to generate cash flow for the business. That means has not yet started to make sales. And for this uh, business, it was for three months period. Okay, if we go to our monthly uh, P and L here, we see that it is January, February, and March. We started to make sales in April. So January, February, and March is our year zero, okay? Because it is pre-operating period for the business, we have not yet started generating sales. So it's a pre-operating period. So tec technically, I have uh, uh, framed that period to be year zero because of that, because we have not yet started to generate sales. But coming back to our valuation, our valuation here, model, for year zero, because we only have three months here that are covered in year zero. So our unlevered free cash flow for, for that period of three months is reasonable to be covered under year zero definition, which is now. So when it is now, there is no application of discounting for that cash flow because it is now already. We discount cash flow to bring it to now. So three months period is, is is reasonable taking into consideration uh, the nature of this business. But you have other businesses that may take, say, 10 to 12 years before you have started to generate sales for the business, those huge projects. Now, for those projects, you can't say those 10-year period is year zero for the purpose of discounting of the cash flow, okay? Because it's too long. So in such situation, you can say year zero only covers the first year. And the other years, though still there is cash outlay in other years, but those cash outlays in other years need to be discounted by discount factor to bring them to the present value. So you have to watch this. And in most of the 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 examples you will see of valuation in business, if you look in other projection from other people, you will see that year zero covers, in, in our case here, it would have been 
capital initial capital loan injected in this this is the uh, they uh, they will take it as initial outlay for the number in year zero as a negative outlay and the rest is cash flow but that is not uh, that is not good because first according to the definition of uh, unlevered free cash flow okay if if we take this example for example we have injected 10 million and capital and 15 million loan but we did this inject injectment of the the capital to also consider buffer capital okay so that buffer capital is not going to be used immediately in year zero okay so we cannot uh, model it as an outlay and that's why we have we have a net cash flow in the year zero here we have a net cash flow or cash flow at the end of the year which is is budgeted to meet for sh working capital uh, short or the cash flow short in next year we will see it properly if we go to the monthly let me go to the monthly sheet monthly cash flow monthly cash flow here sheet so if we look the 25 million invest uh, that has been injected here this one has been used you see we have net cash flow of negative from here here from february negative because our our cash cash flow from operations are negative we have not yet started to generate uh, sales and we have started to generate sales in april Mm -hmm. and uh, still uh, the sales in April are low so we ended up with total, total cash flow from operation negative in April so all this period uh, the, the capital that we have injected into this business is used to fund for those working capital requirements as well as other financing requirements okay so so that's why I said that not all 25 million injected is going to be as an outlay during year zero because there are some budget which have been incorporated as a buffer stock first to, to, first to meet the cash flow requirement in other period which are not in year zero. In, if we take the definition of year zero means now so now here will be general but what about february or if they take even a, a year the whole year to be now still they didn't take into consideration the fact that uh, there would be a certain amount of buffer stock needed that will not be an outlay and it's not appropriate actually to account it as cash outflow during year zero so i hope you get the logic of my modeling of year zero and why I did that okay so so for our evaluation right now let us end up here we have not yet incorporated the terminal value we will do it uh, terminal value after we have checked out our business model and established what could have been going wrong to the extent that we have these uh, uh, these unplausible uh, valuation metrics uh, bye for now see you in the next presentation uh, subscribe to my channel so that you get posted when i share other uh, uh, tutorials uh, using this uh, kaluta projection methodology it's a unique methodology you don't find it anywhere because it has been developed by myself so you, you should not expect to see exactly what i'm doing exactly with others but however knowledgeable you are in financial modeling you will learn something because this is a different approach to what you are used to and i'll explain after finishing our business model training about the business model and we are done 
I'll now start to explain the salient features of this projection, uh, which makes this to be the best, the best way of projecting for your uh, financials. Thanks for now. See you in the next presentation.